kahtu de sak yisiku ge wasa itu sak khone yu khatu sak kahtu de sak akai ide kakonik akhsai akhnakh sati wal a wasa yati linkage to the two khadat atina khsai yati Let's have a nice pasta or tea. Let's get a nice konakje. Ah, okay. What should we eat? Kuu, a kahti day kuu. Ah, yeah. This is day two, so we're gonna introduce ourselves. We'll practice that. Shkacht besak. We will introduce ourselves. Ah, whatever you want to tell us, your name. Your clan or background, and I would like to know how is language learning going, and we'll check in every now and then with a question like that, and what do you think you need, and then after that, we'll just start going through some stuff like uh, how to the basics of forming questions in Thingit, the nouns that are in the first chapters. We're going to do a quick speed through through the beginning Clinket workbook just to sort of give us a good warm up and then uh, we'll keep talking about our activities. Uh, one of the things that we want to do is create several dialogues in groups. So that's going to be one of our tasks this semester is coming up with these dialogues. And so what would be great is if we're developing really good contextual conversations. What kinds of things do we typically talk about? Uh, and so uh, we'll be working in groups to develop that probably about three or four times this semester. Uh, you'll be doing a translation project, which I'll give you next week. Uh, so it'll have the thing get written on one side, and you will be translating it throughout the semester. Uh, and about the halfway point, we'll just sort of see where everybody's at with that. And then you've got a final project, which is hopefully about 10 minutes long, five to 10 minutes. It's entirely in Thingit. Uh, one of our goals is about a month from now, maybe, we'll see, two, three weeks, we'll switch so that the Tuesday class is content. We might switch it, I don't know, because Thursdays will be in this room, which is a little bit better for looking at the screen and stuff. So maybe we'll trade, I don't know, because Tuesday we'll be in a different room that's not quite as user-friendly, I think. But I just want to do one of, the, one of the days where we're just using the language, and this will help push us into being producers, and so think about ways for us to move into the language, stay in the language, talk about stuff, keep a running list of things that you don't know how to say but wish you could so that we can work on that. Uh, so, and we've got folks who are dialed in, make sure that you know you don't have to just sit there and watch things happen, but just jump in. We have the, <clears throat> I try to keep my eye on the chat uh, components there, and so if you want to just, you can ask something through there, you can uh, just jump right in. Feel free to email me in between classes if you have a question. Uh, what I typically like to do is bring it to the class because maybe somebody else has the same question or a similar question. And we'll just kind of go uh, from there. And so uh, let's start with a brief introduction. So again, however you want to tell us who you are. Uh, we might have some new faces. And then tell us, tell me how the language learning is going and what you think you need. We'll just kind of go from there. So uh, we'll start with in the room, then we'll do the online folks, and then uh, then we'll move on from there. Everyone we'll go first. Okay. Um, <coughs> uh, Christopher Yongha won you had to us up. Um, okay, okay. Uh, 
uh, Wonju, um, Hatsuti, uh, um, Korea, Kwan, or um, Hanbo Kwan. Um, and so uh, my name is Christopher Yongha Wan. Uh, my given name is Yongha. Uh, my father's people come from the Wonju clan um, of the central um, eastern peninsula of the Korean Peninsula. Um, and my people are the Hanin peoples. Um, thank you for the opportunity to allow me to speak here. Um, I'll be honest with you, I'm jumping in into like pretty just diving head first, especially because um, in terms of foundation of language uh, for Hlingit, I don't have. But selfishly, one, I wanted to take a class with Kune um, just from past experiences, as well as the fact that I am bilingual. Um, and I have experiences with like language loss and just in terms of ex navigating assimilation. Um, I'm also a teacher in the Juno School District teaching a course called Alaska History. So I almost feel like it's an obligation of my just upbringing for me to like learn the ways of being. I also remember what it felt like to be put into a situation where I just had no idea what the words mean. And so I totally embrace the embarrassment and the shame <laughs> that will come with me just trying to throw words out there that might be a noun and I need to re, you know, conjugate and shift and make it into a verb and I um, you know, need to do that. And also acknowledge that if this is not something that I feel like I'm ready for, then I need to recognize my place as well. That's not something I'm ready for. Okay. Okay. And young, huh? Okay. I tried to translate it, but I couldn't. It was like Tuu Kawadlan. I'm not sure. There's a lot of different, like, subtle variations. How would it translate into English? Uh, yong, well, so that's the fun part about which mm -hmm. is similar, I think. Uh, yong means, like, um, kind of like head wise, like intelligence, so, like, um, top kind of uh, sense. One, my last name. Uh, is means like uh, special or it's like the source, it's the origin. Um, and then in terms of ha means like deep or like depth. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I was trying to figure out if Wonju clan means like place of where the river originates from or if it means like the special place or the place of the people, the plains by the water. I'm really trying to look into that. Okay. And we can just we can just use your given name too. Oh, yeah, please. Yongha would be great. Yongha. Yongha. Sheesh. Um, Leika Hinach, Barbara Craver, Yuchat Yuasak, um, Sugun Yana Eight Aya. Um, can I say my sentences that I wanted to try? Sure. Out? Okay. Um, miss that this decay. Wushkinach deisha kwasatin. Kusiat katlev ayaudati. Kakut ka kut ayanacha kwasatin. Achtu sigu ka kanach kale kale. And achunich satuk ye yanik. Oh. But she's online. So. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's cheese. Okay. Yeah, and so uh, it, it would be fun to sort of, if you guys want to send me some sentences, and then at some point I'll, I'll bring them up, and we'll sort of show you how to sort of, a couple things we might change in there. Uh, because, yeah, and, and those are really good, really good sentences. And these are the things, it's like, you, we're at the point now where I'm sure you're going to want to see something and want to know how to talk about that thing. And that's exactly what we need to be doing. Okay, Sheesh. Sheesh to Sean, you cut to a sock, cling it, Kainach, Kagwantan, Hutsiti, Tlekai Yadi, Ayahat, Shikakwan Dach. Death Kawuk hit ye dach.
Audi gan ya ya yi yi. Ke kunas at. Ijakach yek eat sah ki. Shach gida ti we sah. Okay. Jeez. Ekecha. Ekecha. Did you cut to a sock? Kick Saudi, hit dog, I a hut. Um, Yechna. I think I did that backwards. Um, What's that? Let me, let, me, let me just restart. Um, did you cut to a sock? Yechna, I a hut. Kick Saudi, hit dog, I a hut. And cool quandi, I a hut. Okay, okay. Sage in Sengit is Sashkinagu. Ah, how do you spell that? Uh, <laughs> let me get back in the habit of putting. I gotta create. Usually, just to kind of uh, review, usually when we're writing stuff, we talked about this the other day, um, just because someone was commenting on these things that are plain. And. Uh, Usually what I like to do is just create a document and then put that up there and let folks see it. And then uh, what I do after class is I upload the notes and stuff to our class so that you can certainly write it down, but then also know that it'll be up there later too. Uh, so Sashk is the first part, and that's a Isekuke Dasawit Sashk. Adusa ausaku dasa wit le kalkinach wasadu sago at wit sashk. Kwashia ha dak ka hunki yen ka hakani yen kwashi saku. Isin kuu yisaku ga. Well, it has two different names uh, in English. Commonly called a gopher. Someone gonna tell me? And it's also called a ground squirrel. And this is the name for sage, Sashkinaku. So it's ground, and this is really interesting because we should. Uh, if we isolate these two words, the second one is knock. And do we know what that one translates to? Okay. Medicine. Medicine, right? So there's, there's this thing that happens in Tlingit where something will get a name and it'll be called Nagu afterwards. And sometimes it means that thing maybe taught us how to use it as medicine. But it could also mean this thing is used to keep the other thing away. Mm. So, uh, and I'm not sure the different, like kushtanagu is the word for um, peppermint. Tashkinagu is uh, sage. And tachatnagu, what do you think that one would be? Mosquito repellent. Yeah, what? Tachatnagu is mosquito repellent. So Tagha is a mosquito. So this is, it's just uh, <clears throat> kind of a cool thing. Okay. Jak, yit Ach, it's a 
Ruchi. Das <laughs> Cheese train, okay, 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 a Kayestan <laughs> 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 Achsai a Kasanak Um Ach Ish Nishka A Ningo Stach Ach Kla Duck Awadi A Kikushi Hit Dach How is the language going? Ah Kinga Yukatangi Yana Shik Kwa Gacha shatni Kegwa ke Yak e Yak e kunach Chish leel Ke Hoots A uhu Yuh hat du a sach Tlet ka Kainach Kainach Bob Fagan Ye hat du a sach Zantik Kihini Ye hat yati Washdan Kwan Ayahat Yagi ye Kin de Nichagut Ka Audigan Yande Kit Hatin Cheese. Ach <laughs> Yetlejecha yuk atangi. Gunch cheese. Yata koa. So we write some things uh, in the. Is that high tone? Uch again. Uch, ach, uch. I think it's low. Let me see. Uh, oh, one second.
Yeah, it's low. Okay. Uh, so when we put this dash before a word when we're writing it, it's a longer dash, and what does that mean? Isakuga. So sometimes we'll write a word and it has this long dash right before it. It's, it, yeah, it needs to belong to something. It's not going to appear on its own, right? And so as a body part, once a body part gets uh, a suffix like this, so once it, if we put a suffix on there, like we go from ugh to ugh, what does that tell us? It's not connected to something. It's been removed. So if I was holding my tooth, because maybe we're playing hockey, <laughs> there's my tooth. It's out of my mouth, right? A body part does not get a possessive. And so again, just kind of reviewing some stuff from last semester, when something gets possessed, like if we're speaking English with Clinkett grammar, we'd say, khone cup, khone cuppy. So the possessive marker goes on to the object when it's possessed. The body parts, they only get them when they've been removed. The other step that happens is we'll say a uhu. And that means its tooth. But what we have is it can be substituted, right? So if uh, I have a cat, and if she keeps biting me, I'm going to pull her tooth out. <laughs> I'm just I'm gonna do it. I just like, I just make jokes. I got myself in trouble one time. I wondered how to say this because over Christmas break I was bit by a cat. Oh, really? Yeah. I wondered how to say it. <laughs> so I'll teach you the word for pliers. <laughs> pull and then tooth. So if you pulled that tooth out. <laughs> but so the uh part goes away. So, Bob, I think when you say your name, you could say hoot, uh, the uh part can, it gets replaced by the noun. Yeah. Yeah, so you'd say, um, well, here's, you could say, oops. Nay, could you show That's, us what you're writing? Oh, can you guys not see it? Did I not share it? Oh, I shared and then I turned it off. Mishish for the reminder. Uh, so chet uwatok weidush is the cat bit me. There's a couple. There's two kind of main. There's a couple ways to bite, and there's another verb which would be yik, which would be uh, like a really, like what were they in English? They would call it gnashing, right? So like tuk would be like a a nip, which is usually how an animal. But like if it was really like, you know, yeah. <laughs> if it was really going bad for you, then it would be a wayik. Um, but so, khat uwatak we douche. The cat bit me. Aqa away gand khwachich. Then I threw it outside. <laughs> They're all kind of, whatever you do, you talk to it. Everybody's got different. I make jokes. I don't support animal cruelty. <laughs> we did, we had Hadushi Aya. Yeah, we had to us a do yik at the tin Aya. yeah, I
ye awa hasu in khakhoni ki ya hayat ki ha chu ya cha ta yi an khabu du shi awa ho yi dat khan khna khawe du tu ye yeti so we were going to get our cat uh, fixed because we didn't want to have kittens and so we're getting ready to take the cat to the vet and I think she knew I don't know because it was early in the morning she's usually pretty mellow and I picked her up and I was carrying her down the stairs and all of a sudden she started hissing and growling and she she bit me and so I let her go and then it took us about half an hour chasing her with blankets and it was pretty traumatic and then but we got her to the vet and she got fixed up but I had to tell my kids this like She's the devil's cat. <laughs> so, uh, let's move to our uh, uh, same thing, you guys. Tell us uh, who you are, how it's going, what you might need, things you might want to share. Ah, <laughs> Um, for the last few years, I've just been working kind of half-heartedly at learning Shlingit, and I'm not really very happy about that. So um, I just think, you know, we're so lucky to have all of these resources at our fingertips, dictionaries, audio, video, um, just everything. So many books, so many resources. Um, we're, we're just so lucky. Uh, um, so um, I'm just looking forward to getting serious and working harder at learning Shingit. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Um, I'm happy to be here. Uh, my uh, 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 I'm very, very, very happy to be here. Um, I'm hoping that uh, it awakens some pieces in my memory. And I'm hoping that uh, together with me and Sean Tla together, we're going to do some amazing things along with you guys. Eska. Ah. Eska, Um. Georgie, Hesiat, so. Uh, Kanesti hit 
day will go yakana. Next week, next week shall come. Um, Eska, you had to sack Pengek Enach, uh, Dlait Ka Enach Kua Duffy slash Daphne Bellardi, right? Um, Akdain Tan, I had Kasai Hitdach, Ka Tag Hitdach, Filipino. Yadi Kaguantan Dutchan Kuna ye cut ye tea Kuna schoon ye jahane Tringet yuk etangi and which I uh So, what I wanted to, I have a couple of things. Uh, Gunnachish Kune for um, the cards you sent me today. So I have great plans on using them. What, what he sent me, friends in class, is, um, is it spoons? Cards for playing spoons? Um, but I don't know how to play spoons. So, but definitely until I learn how to play spoons, I can use those cards because there are descriptive things about the animals. Because last week we talked a little bit about the um, writing riddles and having your classmates guess your animals. So I'm looking forward to doing that with my fourth, fifth graders. Okay, so one, another, another thing, you can see this. Remember we did this for the other class? Um, we went through and got everyone's Tlingit name on a chart and their English name and where they actually are calling from or where they are and where they're from. And I thought that was really good because a lot of times we're going, who is that? Where are they? Who is it? And, you know, it gave us, especially over here, it gave us a chance to kind of get to know our classmates a little bit more and kind of know who, whose voices we were hearing. And I wanted to say um, a shout out to Anya, Anshawatki. Anshawatki. I'm so happy that she's in this class. So. And uh, also to Satuk, who is home and sick, but I'm glad she's calling in. Okay, goodness cheese. Okay, goodness cheese. Uh, yeah, we'll do the Hasai Kach, a Hasai Kadishiti Kuch. We'll do that again uh, and test my, <laughs> my Kashkiti skills and organizational skills. Which are always marginal at best. Okay, but yeah, that's really good to make sure we got each other's names and where we're from, and uh, that way we do feel like you know. If you think about it, you guys are you're part of the group that's taking this further than than most people have so far, except for those who already know how to speak, and then those people from long ago who are the trailblazers. Uh, and we'll we'll share some things. Uh, from this winter that were really inspirational uh, a little bit later. Uh, but yeah, just stick together, stick to it, uh, keep each other uh, in the, in the yak, yak yikt. Maybe if you see someone trying to swim for the shore, <laughs> don't let them <laughs> throw a net on them. Yeah, I go think of better metaphors. I remember we were at a kuyik one time and somebody was talking and they're like, uh, and, and you guys are the salmon, and it's like we're the eagles, and we have flown down and and put our claws in you. And I was like, ouch! <laughs> <laughs> it's not comforting. But I always talk like that. I was like, yeah. gaff them and put them in a net. <laughs> I guess it's just how Klingit metaphors work sometimes. Adusa, <laughs> who's going next? Well, yeah, I say, Kua Kuklek, Tachanes, Yukat, Uwasa, Eshna, Hatsati, Late Ka Yari, Ayahat, Tothik, Yeh, Hat Yati, Tlesh Dayas, Desayat, Origank, Kutsiti, Udzika, Clash Akdaya Kushke Klingit 
yukatangi ku a karahek aktuasigu puch ale. Cheesh. I'm always impressed when people could say a whole bunch of stuff and clink it and then say, I don't know very much. It's like, <laughs> that's very good. Yeah, okay, it's cheesh. Hello. Um, on Yanakha, I am a Sai. She Kakwan, I am a hat. Or she Kakwan, I am a Kagwantan Yadi, Ka Kicks Adi, Nach Hatsuti. Um, Stein hit Dach, I am a Um, my Klingit name is Anya Nachtla, but my English name, English name is Ani. Um, and um, where I'm at with the language right now is I'm feeling really inspired. Um, feeling like really, uh, like last night I like went to sleep and I was, when I, while I was trying to fall asleep, I was thinking about how to say like random stuff in Klingit. And when I woke up, I was kind of thinking the same, about the same things. And um, that felt like, Felt really good to me, um, and I'm feeling um, excited. And um, I'm just like always, like the past couple of days, I've just always constantly been thinking, how can I say that? How can I say that? Um, so that's really fun. Ganesh cheesh. Yekecha, ganesh cheesh. Yeowa, yeke. Itch aya kone singit tundatani tin aya yutakitan. Yeachtu yeke da. Cheesh. So, Slinkit Yukatangi goals for myself to use ach kach, ach cake, wanganis, tutan, chekat nasin, um, all the words I learned first semester in sentences. Yeah, it was good I would say like when it comes to putting sentences together, the, the most important thing is that someone understands what you're saying. That's so amazing to, to be at that point and to just recognize that um, it's a thing to celebrate, is that you try and think of something and you could figure out how to say it. And it might not be perfect, but uh, and there's a lot of times I think once we hit this point where we'll just keep the things flowing. Every now and then we'll, we'll just stop and look at something, but more often than not, we'll just kind of keep going because I think corrections, they're good, but they can also just kind of slow you down or make you feel like you, you didn't quite get it. But the bigger picture is that we're, we're getting it. So. Um, can I can't this is the new computer uh can you hear me uh uh anchuatki aya ai like cock enach sarah dibdo you cut to a sock talk one ad ka nimi pu na khat sati uh kakusitan yadi aya khat nest purse aya ach takanuku Hinya kwandach ayachat, um, zanta kahini, uh, ye chat yeti, um, uh, I just also want to give a shout out to Achuni Yan Se Satuk and Ka, uh, Kashke, um, and as far as where I'm at with our language is, um, without getting really emotional is, uh, Satuk so has uh, been a, a mentor of mine and um, was always sharing the language um, when we worked together uh, at SHI 
and I'm just uh, so pleased to be at this in this same space with uh, her and her sister. Gurnath Jish. That's nice. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay. Good cheese. Yeah, wa ya uchin ye jituni a ya tachna kachetzin. Okay. A iti akwa kwashta kuni nach heshi sahwa ach. There's four left. I might count. I do so way. do so way. Anybody else want to go? If not, we might have to move on. Juan Shlain. Juan Shlain. Kuatun. Yay, Kuatun. Link it, Kena. Kuatun, you cut to a sock. Lake Ka, Kena, Juanita. You cut to a sock. Think it, I cut Filipina Kayukwan. I cut Sue. Kaguantan, I cut City. Kick Sadi Kayukwan, Yadi, I cut. Kakla, you do a sock, a ish. Kat Kanakwan City. Gut hit dach ayahat kach nuwu kwan ayahat. So I click your name is Kuatun. I don't know if I'm saying it right. I've never really actually heard it. But that's how they have it at HIA. So that's my guess. My, my English name is Juanita. I'm Clinkit, Filipino, and Hawaiian. And I'm hoping that I can pick up more and remember it more, especially with the three other classes I'm taking at the university. So my semester is very, very busy. I am getting my degree, bachelor's degree for elementary education and also getting my degree for early childhood development. And I'm hoping to use some of this. I do use it with my children, usually words that I, or sentences I use every day towards them. And I'm hoping to use more. <laughs> but right now that's, that's my goal. And it yeah. took me a while to figure out how to turn this mute on and turn it off. <laughs> oh, you okay. <laughs> And <laughs> sheesh. Uh, just, yeah, just remember, uh, it's, it's best to stay muted if you're not talking, but to always chime in if you want to talk. Uh, I have a friend recently, and uh, I won't say what she teaches, but she teaches some distance classes and somebody forgot to mute their phone and somebody came over to visit them. And they said, oh, I'm sorry you're in class. And they said, it's okay, it's just blank class. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you stay muted out there, if you, just, just in case I might say something, I don't know. Uh, these classes, uh, again, are recorded and put onto YouTube. I don't want that to stress you out, but we want to make sure that other people have ways to learn as well. And it's also good to know that you can, if you miss a class, you can watch it. If you want to uh, say, oh yeah, when were we talking about this thing, you can review it just so that you have some options out there, but just know, uh, I, don't, I haven't figured out an opt out program. I guess you kind of go online and just never say anything ever. It's <laughs> probably the only opt out I have. Uh, just, you know, the goal was to sort of create this online, always accessible type of thing. We never ask anybody to leave. Uh, anybody can come, everybody should come. Uh, and so just so that you all are aware uh, and then we were asking uh, some elders, it's just funny stuff, we love and respect our children, but we were talking about starting this language nest years ago, so we got some elders together and we're like, 
We used to phrases for kids. And the first one they told us was, Shishkach, which is, shut up. Stay <laughs> 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 away, like, knock it off. And so, they were just laughing. Was, uh, yeah, we'll certainly go over some useful phrases for having kids, uh, you know, be nice, don't touch that. And, and there's lots of other good things, too. But, okay. Iti yeah. okay. uh, Chatea. Fish. Ah. Quantline you had to a sock. A chalk na hatsati. Blade cock a teatan yadi a yahut. Kir quanta ha yahut. Kach hanak kodati. Um. Hatch. Hakach. Hana. Um. Ye ah, uh, hut are you to hutunk? Um, ye jehane we Rango High School, Stikine Middle School, Ka Johnson O'Malley. Um, ah, uh, slinket hut hut too. Um, I'm learning and I'm teaching nouns, nouns, nouns. Kunach. <laughs> Kunach nouns. Um, I've been invited to WCA, the tribe, to teach them how to introduce themselves. And and they, they want to give me money for that, and I'm 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 quite jazzed about it. However, I would like them to learn the vowels and the consonants and just lead in the way that we were taught with um, um, so that's what we're doing. And I really love that beginning to get workbook the same as Duffy. I really appreciate that. When I looked at it, I, I almost fell over with glee. It's so beautiful to look at all of the colored pictures and everything that, we always thought we needed with the fourth edition. So that's what I'm using. And then being able to send them your link and having them look at that is beyond Thunderdome. And so they have that in their hands right now. And the one thing that people really love is that clan, and and, and going down and looking at that stuff. I really appreciate learning out of that book. However, I feel like I know all the nouns, except for I couldn't tell you what sak, sak, nagu was. I was like, what is he saying? Is it a plant? But I noticed that you didn't have anything pinched on the sak. So I, you know, down here, it's like, um, it's like a, a that thing that runs around up in the woods, that hat, the marmot, that marmot. And uh, so I think that I'm not overwhelmed because I love the language very, very much. And so it's not overwhelming for them to ask me to do these things, but I'm really fortunate that I got to take your class this last year and this year um, I wish I'd have done, I would have done it earlier, but I'm kind of like echoing what other people say, like it's kind of a half, half thing. I listen to the, the CDs and I teach nouns and I'm hard put to call my elder, you know, she's from cake and I could, and I just, you know, get really busy. I'm so popular, you know. Will you please teach here? Yes. <laughs> Things like that. And but I really appreciate all of you and especially uh um all of you, Jock and the elders. Yeah, Yeah, in Just think it, 
ሽትከልቱ የአዋ የጫቁ ቃቁ አያ ሀሰኩ አክ አቃአዊ ደክሰኩ ያከኩ ነክ አያ ያስንጊ ዲቅተንጊ ዳተኸሰከ አቆ አከ ከክቱ አቅ ውጪን ውጪና ያ ዋሳ ከክቱ ስቱ ቀያ ሀይ ቀተንጊ ይቀ አ ቆጭ ያት ኢኮሽ ኢልቆሃ Can you hear me? Ah. Oh. Tuchia de yukhatu asak pagwantan khatsati gao you do asak hanaka hedi takwa nedi yadi aya khat kech khan ye khatati Ah uh, I just want to learn as much as I can in this class and try to retain it as best i can okay <laughs> okay that sounds great uh so we're going to take five but uh let me share one thing with you guys just for just for fun we were talking about this word uh, a little bit yesterday in the other class or clinker oral literature class and this document is by jeff lear uh, he had handwritten like almost every clinket verb out there although uh, we we figured that somebody didn't scan all of them because it goes to the underline k and so there's a, a few things that might be missing uh the rest of the underline k verb roots and then the underline k pinched and then the uh x underline pin and so there there's a few And so then I asked him I was like, "Hey, do you know where we can get the rest of that?" And he's like, "Oh yeah, I got to finish it. I think I'll finish it." Right? And so he's got them some like in his brain or something and maybe in his other notes, but this uh basically is the verb roots and then all the known verbs within them. And it's not all of them. Like all of the clinket verbs are not documented. And we'll talk about what we do about that. We we think I mean, I would say probably 95% of them are documented that would be my guess anyways uh but as you if you wanted to just sort of another thing to do is just to flip through this and just you'll find some neat things some of them are kind of fun or funny things to say um but this was one khasayi which is to be renowned or famous and so you can you know if you're just joking it's fine but just don't say stuff like this in public like khatsay i'm famous right but if you're just we're just teasing and laughing and having fun and we just sort of continue to stress there's different types of thinget there's we're all here we all know each other we can laugh and stuff and we could tease and there's a lot that you can do but when somebody comes in and we don't know them we can't be too silly or else we're going to ruin our clan's reputation like they're going to leave they're like those guys are just crazy <laughs> you should have heard the crazy thing you know but then uh and then if the circle widens and we're doing public presentations or speeches then there's formalities knowing the clans and who you should be addressing and and the answer is the opposite clan all the time like you shouldn't ever stand up in public and just say like i'm shukakh adi and i shouldn't say boy the shukakh adi we did a great job like that's really a bad thing to do it's always that opposite even if like i was at a qanakh tadi party and they did amazing i would leave it up to the opposites to say that i couldn't get up and say that um and then there's this other realm which is getting into storytelling prayer spiritual languages uh and big speeches and and stuff like that like the speeches to remove grief and very specific types of things and then there's just different expectations in terms of content who you're addressing uh and and on and on so just just keep that in mind so we do a lot of stuff in here where we can laugh and just stay relaxed but sometimes we'll just touch on some things to say yeah you could say that 
but uh, don't say that to other, you know, in public. And so, because then they'll they'll be like, what is he teaching them? But then there's there's other things that we'll learn how to say too. Like sometimes uh, if you're teasing, and there's different things you could say teasing, and sometimes you might not be teasing. I, I think there's a world where we can argue in Tlingit. There's a world where we can get into uh, pretty harsh debates in Tlingit. And we need to be able to do that. We need to be able to do all the other stuff as well. But one of the things is we start creating these language environments and then we'll switch to English when we have to do something important. And, and I understand because we want to make sure that we're clearly communicating and we're being understood. But we're going to have to make that transition as well where all the stuff... I can remember I had a roommate and when, I'm, when I get mad at him I'd say, I'm going to tell you this and think it first because then I'm going to be nice about it because and then I would tell him in English right and, then, and so these are just some things to think about um, but take five and if you got any questions uh, let me know we're going to come back and we're going to talk about uh, plate so uh, five minute break uh, let's talk about plate it is the season uh, and so this is kind of, I put this slideshow together for, uh, sometimes would bring the outdoor studies students in and teach them like these different words for snow. And sometimes there's this kind of mythology that like some indigenous languages have like a million words for snow or something. I'm like, well, every language does. It's, <laughs> that's how Clinket works. You just say light snow, heavy snow, fine snow. It's just, it's not different. Than uh, but sometimes it's kind of fun to look at how it works. So what we typically do. No, I was looking at it. I just, I just want to say about that um, a book, uh, the Eskimo, the, the mythology of Eskimo words for snow. But anyway, Tony Woodbury, you may have met him in New York. Uh, he, he wrote, he works in Yupik, and he said, that, well, it depends. The Eskimos have a hundred words for snow. Depends on what you mean by Eskimo, and what you mean by word, and what you mean by snow. <laughs> I'm glad they don't do that with Clinkett. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. So we'll learn a few. Uh, different nouns and different verbs in here to talk about plate. Uh, so the first thing is, as we hear people, sometimes we can assist them because the DL sound, gla, has kind of fallen out of the Clinket population, not with Clinket speakers. And so you'll hear people turn this into a GL sound. So you hear people say glate, gla, 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 like glad. And that sound combination does not exist in the Tlingit language. And so this, I, I started to think about this when I saw a, a neat license plate that was, you know, had Tlingit on it, but it said hot, like H-O-T, gla, G-L-A-A. -A. And I remember just thinking, what on earth is hot Gla. <laughs> hot, like the gla is hot, but it's from hot gla. So gla on its own, D L A A. And in dak kaku wu has to e dak hado. And others, there were some older Huna speakers which would say hada. And it just means like it's too much, oh my, type of a thing. So if we hear people saying, Glate, we could help them transition to plate, 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 plate. So there's how many, if we kind of go back to the ways that we're teaching reading and writing and think it now, how many letters are in the word glate? Nusk. Nusk. Nusk, right? DL is considered one letter. It's one symbol, one sound. Gla. EI is one letter. A. 
And then the T is one letter. T. So like the Clinkett spelling bee in the future, like I don't know how we're going to do it. <laughs> Gook. Eight. Oh. T. A. Right? <laughs> I think it's going to be like putting tiles onto a board or something. I think that's what we have to transition to. We have about 61 letters, so it's going to be a challenge. But um, anyways, as we think about that, these are just things to kind of think about. And then to like think about the, the Tlingit alphabet, There's, there are lots of sounds. I think you could safely say there are 61 sounds in Tlingit. And this includes uh, several sounds that only exist in maybe one or two communities now, maybe three or four. And so the ones that are uncommon is this, the letter O, uh, which is, it's used everywhere for the, when people use ho ho. And so that is used at the end of a gunachish, maybe, to say like, super big thanks. And sometimes I've seen speakers who will stand up to give a speech and they're, what they're trying to say is, this is something really important. One of the last public speeches I saw Walter Sobolov give, he stood up and he just said, ho ho, ho ho, ho ho, ho ho. And then he moved into his speech. And I, well, as soon as he did it, I was like, this is big. Then he just made this incredible speech in Klingit. But that O sound, O, oh, it exists in Teslin and they use it regularly. And I couldn't get any, I, I was trying to figure out if it changes back and forth, but basically where we're using this oo sound, sometimes they're using an o sound in Tesla. But the example I was using was tuk and tok, which is a but. And so <laughs> it just descended into laughs because I was like, well, what if you say like butthole? Yeah, anyways. <laughs> And so it was the wrong example to use to try and get. Like, it was good because you can attach things at the end. And that's, that's when I would see if it changes back to the, the U or not. Uh, but the, in, in Daislin, uh, some folks do say coach for a wolf. Uh, and sometimes it's kook for a box. And sometimes it's kook for a pit under a house. So I haven't figured out the exact rule. It seems to be a little bit, there seems to be sort of a guideline there, um, which in, if you're in Teslin, basically if in coastal and, and other areas for uh, sort of greater northern Tlingit, what's spoken traditionally here in the Juno area, if you had any form of this U or O and a K or a G, I think it's going to switch to the O sound. But this, it's just something to keep in mind. As we uh, learn Tlingit, we kind of, it's been standardized to this one particular dialect. There are at least three or four living, breathing, healthy dialects right now. We want to respect them. Uh, if, you're t if you're learning Southern dialect, uh, because you're from Henya or Sanya, there's, we could, I could show you what the things are that are different. If you're in Daislin, I could show you what those things are so that you make sure that you're using your own dialect. If you're from Yakdat, uh, and the, maybe the one who gave us the dialect is the mountain goat. I don't know. Just because if, if people were, like, let's say a long time ago, and you came here and you saw a mountain goat, and you said, Wasa do a sock right here in Ak. They would say, Janwu. But then you got in your boat and you paddled up to Yakutat and you saw another mountain goat and you'd say, Wasa do a sock. And they'd say, Jinwu. And then you got on your, you put your big boots on and you walked over to Car Cross and you say, Wasa do a sock. You saw another mountain, or maybe you just walk around with the same mountain goat. On. <laughs> and then you say, Wasa do a sock. And they would say, Jun. And then you go to Teslin, and you take him to Teslin, and you say, well, sad do a sock. And they might say, Janu. So there, and there's, and, mm -hmm. but that doesn't, 
but it shows you some of these main dialect areas, but it doesn't show you what the dialect things are. Uh, the basics for dialect, you have the, the southern Tlingit and the northern Tlingit. That's one of the big dialect thing. There was Tongas Tlingit, but it's gone. So there were three main dialects that had to do with vowel and when we talk about tone. Okay, so tone means there's high tone and low tone. This is why we try not to ask a question like that. Because in Tlingit, you, you don't do that and you say, Hine tuasiku. Like, that's not how you ask a question. That's also not how you signal uncertainty. Right? So if I say, Wasatu saukyata. Nada? Like, you can't do that. You know, I mean, we're going to find, we're going to catch ourselves doing that. I do it still. Right? I do it a lot. Uh, but we shouldn't do that because Clinkit has a tone system built into the language and it doesn't have to do with uh, communicating uh, whether it's a question or not. Because Hawaiian, this is a question. And in English, this is a question. And think it, this is a question, right? <laughs> so just remember, like, your tone is built into the language. It, it doesn't, it, it changes a little bit for, like, your mood and other things. You know, like, you can get real grouchy or you can get real bossy. You can be real nice. But the one thing, like, so we look at this, the way I like to think about vowels and think it is that there are four vowels. And each of those four have four variations. It can be short or long. It can be low or high. And it's going to move, sometimes it's going to move back and forth. What do we call that thing in the sky that helps control the tide? And we see it in the nighttime. It's, it's, yes. Right? And how do you say it's mooning outside? Anybody know? Audlidis. So audlidis. So dis goes long. Dis, dis. Audlidis is the moon is shining. Right? Audlidis. So this is something we're going to see is that these vowels, they move from high to low, short to long. And they do so in pretty predictable ways. But this is something we're going to have to control because English doesn't really do that. And so moving from English to Tlingit, this is something we're just going to have to watch. What I see is a tendency to make everything short. We could do high-low, but the long, if it's long, keep it long. Keep it long. And so these are some things that we're going to see. So when we talk about dialect, like this one, uh, we'll, we'll jump to this. So we see I, I, E, E, high and long, right? So when we have uh, a river or some water, most Klingit people will say heen, heen, eraka, heen. 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 So let me put this up here so you can see. So heen. Oops. Let me move this so we can see it. So this is how it's spelled. Heen. So the, the southern Tlingit on Sanya and Henya, when they have a long high vowel, it goes back down. That's that's the old way of the the southern Tlingit is they would say, heen. So it has this kind of breathy fall at the end. And that's, that's why a lot of the old people would say, like those southern Tlingits on Prince of Wales, they get this kind of sing-songy Tlingit. That's what they used to tell me. Because they would hear that tone go back down. For Tonga's Tlingit, they would say, hitten. So there was no tone in Tonga's Tlingit. So that's the first thing with the dialects is, if you want to speak that, so you just got to sort of try and get yourself to do that falling tone, for those long high vowels. Where was the Tongas? Uh, Saxman. Saxman. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then the last ones died in the 1980s. Mm -hmm. There's some recordings of them. Uh, Frank and Emma, I think her last name was, Williams. And so uh, Jeff, he did, he did some work with them, Weha. 
But then uh, Zeus, James Crippen, has the theory that that's the first Tlingit. Because there's certain things that Tlingit still does that doesn't really make sense, but if you look at Tonga's Tlingit, you say, oh yeah, it comes from Tonga. So there was probably, that's probably what Tlingit was thousands and thousands of years ago. Then they absorbed some other language, some other Dene language, and they, that's where the tone comes from. That's one of the theories, anyways. So then uh, the other major thing with dialect is this E sound and the A sound, which is right here. So uh, some, a lot of Tlingit will say, but then some of the speakers in Angoon, most of the speakers in Cake, some of the Southern speakers, some of the Teslan, you know, most of the Teslan speakers, they would say Yan Uwani. So it's this just a switch from A to E, which you'll see quite a bit. And so sometimes you'll say Kashuk for electricity or cramps. And then other people will say kashik. And that's just something that you'll learn. You'll just spot it. And this is just something. Learn Tlingit and then learn how your dialect works so you can speak like the people where you're from. That's what I suggest. Um, and th those are the main things. There's also uh, an M. Oh, I guess I don't have the M on here. Ugh, 62 <laughs> sounds. <laughs> I have. So there is an M sound in Dakka uh, Tlingit for the inland Tlingit, uh, and it's fairly predictable. Sometimes it's just sort of there, because it, it used to be this sound, this when what we call the gamma or Shewaki Y, which is a Y with eyes, uh, and that sound was like mm. it was a very nasally N type of sound. The Tesla speakers still have it. Like you'll you'll hear them say, ying and you'll hear it. It sounds like an NG type of a sound. Um, and then there's other places it tends to pop up too, which it's just really interesting uh, to to listen to folks there and, and to see how they're holding on to that sound. Otherwise, that sound has become either a Y or a W on the coast. In the inland, sometimes it will become an M. And it's we're still trying to figure that out because we'll have speakers that'll give us different ways to say different things, like gum for gao, right? It's gao on the coast, gum on the inland. But then if we say, well, what would the possessive marker be? Because it should be a U. Uh, and if it was going to stay an M, you would predict ah gamu. But then some speakers are saying gao wu, and some speakers are saying gao ye, and I was just getting confused. So I was like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I need, need more linguists to look at this. But uh, those those are some of the things. Uh, yeah, so on shawat ki ye awe, henya and henya. Yep, absolutely. And so the other thing that you're seeing is we call it cake, but the people of cake would call it kiq. I don't see how it didn't become keek. Ah. Like if, if you're going to just, yeah. at some point too, we're going to just, well, we should make the transition to just, you don't have to say skagway, you can say shkakwe. Oh. And I think we could teach everybody to do that. Okay. Uh, so there's some other things that we're going to look at in terms of these sounds. Also, like, it's good practice. So some of the things you could do on your own as far as practice is uh, learning these nouns, which we've talked about. Nouns, it's a step. you got to have these boxes full of things. And one of those boxes is your box of names. Think it, and think it when we say noun, uh, what some of the elders have told us, they say, it's just something's name. That's what a noun is in the clinket brain. It's not a person, place, or thing. It's just a name, right? So that you'll learn what this thing is called, what that thing is called. So if you ever want to know what something is, you say wasa duwasak yata. And so if you're pointing at it, waita, that one, this one, 
or you could just say the English word. Wasat du asak chair, thingit chenach, and you're just asking what it's called, and then the speaker will give you the name of that thing. But learning a name is important. Nouns are important. One of the challenges is a lot of language programs don't move beyond nouns, like especially endangered languages. Just learn nouns, numbers, colors, all up and down. But they are important so that you can just talk about these things and <clears throat> combine them with the other things. You'll fill your other boxes. So I think one, one step that we try to do is say, what are these different boxes? What are the different parts of the Clinket language? And then what are the things that are in those boxes? So one of your jobs is to fill your boxes so that you know. And sometimes maybe there's boxes within boxes, right? Like when we start talking about direction and location, there's three types of things. There's a word that stands on its own. The key is up above. The yi is down below. But that's not above anything, it's just up above. To say, then the other one is one that has to tie to something, to be above it or below it or around it. And then the third type is a suffix that says what it's kind of doing in that area. So then you'll learn how to tie those things together, right? Because some of them can take a suffix, some of them can't. Okay. So when you mentioned the, um, the dash and the oop, oops, mm -hmm. um, is that a segment that has to be attached to the object, so that it's, you know, that's a way in order to connect to something, would that be similar to what you were just describing in terms of um, some of those names? Yeah, absolutely. So like, um, well, for some of these things, like we'll see um, the key. So just to be up above, right? So up above, um, so that doesn't have anything before it, because you could just say the key, and that means up above. But if you wanted to say uh, kina, which means above, over something, mm -hmm. now you're going to put that dash in front of it, because it needs, there needs to be something there, right? Sort of like you can't use some of these things in English without it belonging to another word. Because if someone says, hey, have you seen my hat? And if I said, um, on. That's on, like like the power, like the TV, like it's on the table, right? So it needs to belong to something, right? Like, hey, where did it, where did that mouse go? He went under. He went under the couch, right? So there there has to be something there, and and Tlingit has that as well. So these are we call them relational, which means it needs to belong to something. And for Tlingit, the key is to remember it comes after. Nadak ka on the table, nadak tayi. Right? And so that's just another type of thing. It comes after the yeah, it comes after whatever it's having that relationship to. So if it was like the mouse under the table, was the mouse table under. Yes, and that would be the order. So you can start switching it around in English if you want to just practice. He did. I'm going to go door through. Okay. He forgot him. So there's more stuff. We'll talk about that later. Let's just look at some examples. So snow, the name of it. Oh, the, that one the one last thing I'll say about names is uh, we're doing this exercise uh, where we just ask these two out speakers to talk about the difference between red and yellow cedar and to record them. And they said they'd do it. And Kehinuk, John Martin, started it off. And he was just naming all these trees. I was just watching him. I was like, huh, I wonder what's going on. And then he got done and he said, we're Clinket because we know those names. And he said it all in Clinket, right? And I was like, that's it, right? And so like knowing these names is you, you're entering into this relationship between what the people who have lived here for tens of thousands of years and all these things around them. And that's why they'll say, Everything on Clinket land understands the Clinket language. And so you enter into this very special relationship with things by learning its name. So this one is called Glate. Glate. 
Right. Right. And there are certain nouns that can also be colors. Right. So um, I'll share a poster with you guys later that just shows all the known colors and thing. But there's no actual word for colors. Like in English, like blue doesn't mean, well, I guess it could. Like, I'm so blue, right? <laughs> but usually it just means that color. For Tlingit, you usually say, so it's like this, right? So to say something is white uh, colored, like a car or a cat, you'd say, Glate Yachyati. Glate Yachyati. Glate Yachyati. Glate Yachyati. Glate Yachyati. Glate and there's a verb here, yachyati, which means to be like something. And it could look like it, it could act like it. There's all kinds of things. So the, the yach is one of these sort of things, to be, to be like that. So for example, there's a story where they're talking about long time ago, they would build a brush house on the back of, of the house, and that's where a woman would have her baby. And she would be secluded, and nobody was allowed to go near her. Just do yach ayah shawati, do chantkeguati. Only the women of her clan would come near her. So you'd say, ach yach nach sati ah, the ones who were the same clan as me. Ach yach, like me. Yach, do yach. Fingit yach. It's like that. Right? Or it could be the, sometimes seen as kind of the same. So you say, Tlait Yachyati. And a lot of times with this Yachyati, you're going to be talking. So this is, again, as we want to move towards more descriptive language. Sakwat Yachyati, we cake. That dog is brown. My dog is black. Right? Then for it to be. Uh, snowing. Glade dark was a ton. 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 Then here we've got a long low vowel, long low vowel, short low, short low, short high. Glade dark was a ton. Right? So this, this is how we start to get that rhythm of Shingit. And at first, you know, as we're sort of learning, sometimes it's a little robotic. And, you know, sometimes speakers are like, hey, you sound, they sound funny. And we do sound funny, but we, we can naturalize it later. So this Dak Wusatan means for precipitation to fall. So if, once we learn the name for rain, Siu Dak Wusatan. Now it's Siu Dak Wusatan. And if it's, uh, like how, in Juno, locally, it's called Snaining. Yeah. <laughs> Other places it might be called Sleet. Sleet. Right? I think it's, so you'd say Kaklahin. Kaklahin. And then we'll, we'll learn when we review that weather chapter, then you, there's a word for hail, fine rain. Uh, there's these big snowflakes. Uh, if there's big snowflakes and there's already snow on the ground, that's different than big snowflakes that fall on the ground and melt right away. They have two different names. So if it's really like blizzardy, Snowing super heavy. Glade ya kawa dun. Glade ya kawa dun. Glade ya kawa dun. Glade ya kawa dun. And then if the snow is, because uh, this was something we would say, we learned how to say lots. So we'd say, ah, clean, whatever. Ah, clean, cake, bunch of dogs. Ah, clean, douche, bunch of cats. A lot of food. But then we said, A train glate. And the said, Uh uh. Glate katlan. So conceptually, sometimes you gotta learn what, what's the concept in the language. 
So when you talk about there being a lot of snow, you say it's deep. This verb works for water or snow. Not really for anything, like even if the people were all piled up for whatever reason, like, <laughs> they wouldn't be qatlan. That's really just bodies of water, which includes snow, because it's water, right? Plate qatlan. Plate qatlan. Plate qatlan. So if I wanted to tell you that the water was deep, how do you think I'd say it? Heen qatlan. Yeah, a way. Heen qatlan. What if I'm asking if like the ice is thick enough? It would be um, with the clock. So there's this thing to have like a, a thickness. Okay, so that's so what you're like, okay. yeah. This would be like to the bottom of whatever the cavity is. I'm asking if Friend Lakes is frozen and deep enough or not. That would be really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> then you talk about the thickness of the ice and that would be different. Okay. So a snow snowstorm, plate qidi, plate qidi, plate qidi, plate qidi, And so awqid would be heavy precipitation, uh, but more in like uh, uh, like squall. Sometimes they call them. So now we're going to get to all these different types of snow. Right, so we've got uh, some snow that's just in light piles, uh, which isn't often, that's like Fairbanks snow. <laughs> like when I lived in Fairbanks, I didn't really need a shovel, I just used a broom just to go there and just scrub it all over. So that you might call Glade Kaketsk. Glade Kaketsk. Glade Kaketsk. Glade Kaketsk. Glade Kaketsk. And then uh, snow that drifts around really easy, that doesn't pile up, but that tends to just drift around. Glad kakehuk. Glad kakehuk. Glad kakehuk. Glad kakehuk. And then you have ashy snow, which I don't know the difference between ashy snow and fine snow, but maybe it is dirty. Because so the, the verb root means ash, like ket, it's ashes. So maybe it's ash, something, maybe it is kind of discolored. Late kaket. Late kaket. Late kaket. Late kaket. And then if it's snowing like these really tiny snowflakes, those are snow babies. Aww. Come fine snow or plate yetki. Plate yetki. Plate yetki. Plate yetki. Plate yetki. There's little oh. children. I think we already did light dry snow. Uh, blowing snow. Plate kauhu. Plate kauhu. Plate kauhu. Plate ka uhu. Plate ka uhu. So that uh is to, for something to blow around. Uh ja is the wind because it's always blowing, right? Kla uh is for somebody to blow air out of their body. So here's uh, if there's snow on the ground and then you get these really big snowflakes that come. Uh, for s I think it means like what a deer stares at. Oh. Uwakan katis ayi. 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 Then if you have really large snowflakes that melt as soon as they hit the ground, uh, they're called uh, grouse poop. Nuktatli. 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 And then wet snow. 
or slush. Kaklahin. 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 Lumpy snow. Uh, what is the S doing there? One, two, three. <laughs> I have to check. Let me check this one real quick. Uh, oh, it, <laughs> it should be late kadutla uhu at late kadutla uhu at. So when things get names, so kadutla uhu would be somebody. It's just happening. It's being blown. So I think it has these fourth-person pronouns that get put in there. And then the at is a, a thing. Uh, okay. There's a bunch of different... I'm going to skip some of these. Uh, another fun one was... Ya nashnek. Ya nashnek. Ya nashnek. And that's for the snow to start slushing. It's getting... They call it rotten. Yeah. Because like if especially that's when you'd use like I'm gonna go out on the lake, kayak ya nashnik. It's starting to get soft, it's getting slushy. Yeah. Uh, I'll put this up so you guys can see the other ones too. I guess uh glade zuna is kind of a fun one. Because it's a uh, snow oh. missile. Oh. So a uh, zuna is pretty fun. Uh massage. Oh yeah, and kachuhti, so Kachuch is to also, it's massage and to pack or to pat. So if you're going to do something with dough, uh, and this is another one where it could be chuch or chuch, depending on where you're from. So, is what they gave to snowman, because you couldn't tell if it was a snowman or kleitcha, right? Is that the same verb for bread, kneading bread? Yeah, for kneading bread. Yeah, same, same verb. So, what's, uh, would snowman be like? Oh, man. Like, Zuna, bake, or like? Oh, okay, well, so Zuna, So this, this is kind of fun. So, like, we'll take a side or is answer. That just referring to like the throwing. Yeah, because when Plinkett loves to have these categories. Right, it just really likes to have these categories. So, for example, if we took a look at uh, how do you say throw it, I'm like, well, there's a bunch of different ways because it depends on what you're throwing it and how you're throwing it. So, you can throw plural objects, uh, which is you get the sample sentence, they will throw you into the furnace, which I'm always curious. I'm like, huh. You're going to be. You are going to be thrown into the fence. I don't know. Yeah. Y'all. Y'all are going to be thrown. <laughs> Just, I don't know why. Who's throwing people in the furnaces? Okay. <laughs> then you could throw something while holding on to one of the ends. So throwing a net, right? You could throw uh, a rock, like just a general object. You could throw a large bundle of things, <clears throat> a ball. You could throw a stick. You could throw a nun, like this is how you would throw the dog out after it bit you. <laughs> you could throw liquid. It's dead. <laughs> yeah, right. Yen uh, hitch, like for a toddler or something, or it could be an adult, throw themselves on the ground, right? Uh, then you could throw something with so much force that it scatters. So this is how you would when we were laughing on payday about just throwing our money all around town, uh -huh. that would be this one. You could throw, uh, to, to hit, to poke something, you're throwing it to poke. So that's where you get a spear, uh, to poke or to push. Uh, you can throw or push it onto something through a rock. And this would be, uh, and just to sort of look at the logic behind the language, this would be like pushing a rock over onto somebody, not throwing a rock at somebody, because that would be zu. So that's where the zuna comes from, because now you're throwing it like a 
I'm, you're throwing it to hit somebody. This is how you would throw like a rock if you were hunting some little birds or something with rocks. That's how you do it. And then you could throw it at the head of something. So it's kind of, it's just neat. It's one of these things where you're going to find that sometimes there's just a bunch of different categories for things. And this is what uh, Schenkit tends to do. Oh. I said we're going to do questions, so maybe we'll do questions. I was going to do some of these, how to talk about describing things, but maybe we'll do that next week. So next week we'll look at how to describe some things. But I wanted to start talking about how to form questions in Tlingit, and then just start reviewing some of the nouns from beginning Tlingit. So what you'll see with Tlingit is it tends to be a, things that just add up and start changing each other. Right, and that's how questions work. So there's, you can make things into a yes or no question, but in terms of asking a sort of more open-ended question, like when we say, like these, there are questions that are being put onto these other uh, phrases. So the first thing is there's these sort of, kind of three parts to it. And the first part is just shows you what kind of question it's going to be. So you have da, 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 adu, gu, un. And then it adds with this other particle, which is sa. So everybody say sa. 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 And it has kind of three different, I guess I would say two different meanings. The first meaning is a voice. It just means a voice. But when you add it to something, like you add it to one of these, and you're kind of giving voice to the question, right? The other thing is it's a body part right here where your neck connects to your body. That's called sa. 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 And when we learn some different names for things, like sait. As a necklace, it means sa. a ut, the thing on that part of the body. And a uh, scarf is sada tai. It warms up around the sa. And then uh, sada at, I think, is a necktie. Sakate is an apron, like a dance apron. Sa ka at. So the other thing you're going to learn, you'll see with thing, it, it just things that get put together and then they, they kind of change each other sometimes when you put them together. But this is one of the ways we ask questions, is there should be a sa, and then there'll be a, the question article. Um, so, but this is for your larynxes. Sa. Uh-huh. So that's your voice. Yeah, yeah, so vocal cords and this part of the body as well. Yeah, absolutely. Because, for example, like uh, if I said the this verb, uh, so these are two different verbs. That uh, they're different verbs, and they have, but they have very similar meanings. So the first one, if I said ichwaach, <laughs> And that means I heard you, but I heard you rustling around. I heard you making a noise. You were walking. There was something about it that I heard. But to say I heard you talk or I heard you singing, I would say, so this sa pops up in there, which means voice. I heard your voice. And so this is how, if you want to know if somebody hears you, did you hear me? So, so now we've we turned it into a question, this yes or no question. Is it the same saw that appears in Simon? Yes. 
Did you all hear me? Okay. So it's the same thing. Sa, sa. So it's a voice. It's this part of your body. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's those two things. Right? So when we put these together, you're going to have this, and you might have ya, he, we, or you at the end. So it's thing one, thing two, thing three. So you can say, da sa, da sa, da sa, da sa, da sa. And that's just what, right? For example, somebody says my name, kone, da sa. Or if somebody says something and I couldn't hear them, da sa, right? But you can also put da sa ya. What is this? Da sa we, what is that? Da sa you, what is that way over there? So you'll see sometimes the ya or the we should be there, but other times not. Right? And so uh, this was something we learned early on in Tlingit. The context would just be like if we were there and I saw something and I wasn't sure what it was, I might say da sa we. What is that? And then you say, cake. Right? It's a dog. Cake. So what? I was, when I asked you about that question a couple of days ago, um, or I think a week ago, I was looking into, I looked up because I was trying to find like a definition for what it meant, like vocals or like voice. And there is actually a similarity in Korean, which I thought was interesting. And this is just this random like in or un where you just put it after you say something like egosun chota, and that just means like this is good, and it just happens to be like that adding of that voice. So like, oh wow, yeah. And, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. and there is one instance where you use sa just kind of on its own. Mm -hmm. So I'll say sa, and that means say it and clink it. That it's kind of a command form. Uh, so, so thinking about how these work, and then we'll look at some examples so that we won't run out of time. So, like what this chart is showing you is just sort of the, the sa comes after, and then if you look across, it shows you what it's doing. So da sa is asking what? If you have some set of things, you'd say da qa sa. And this one, the ah part, can be replaced, right? So if there is some, uh, I don't know, so there's some apples up here, and you said, and for whatever reason, I was going to let you pick them. <laughs> so the, you could put a noun there, and then the sa can come after, right? So I could, there could be these people over there. Which one of those guys is your dad? Or on the Mari Povich show or whatever. It, <laughs> <laughs> it just came up today, so. Um, so, which clan are you? Right? Which language do you want? So we'll see there's lots of different uses we can have for these. The next one is how. Wasa. 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 And sometimes we've been going through these and speakers will be with us and they'll say, no, wasa means what? Because they'll say wasa i duasak, which they translate as what is your name? But, and they're correct, but wasa, it, it means how. Wasa i duasak literally translates to how do people call you? And it's just the, there's these subtle differences, right? It's like, that's why I think it is really hard to just translate these things on their own, because they always are interacting with other things. Adusa. 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 Oh, oh yeah, and then we'll talk about the cha and kesh and chish. Um, 
So adusa is who, right? And then sometimes you'll see a ch on the end, aduchsa. The ch pops up when we're saying, who's doing the thing? There, sh there needs to be a verb after, and you're asking specifically who is doing the verb. Otherwise, it could be just generally who. Like, who wants, who wants, adusadu to wasagu Who wants to talk first? Adusadu to wasagu ya yakei atchai. Who wants this great food, right? Adusawi ifa, who's your mom? Adusawi iish, who's your dad? Right? Adusayi sitin. Who did you see? Adusa i'ina kawanik. Who told you that? Right. And we'll do the. We'll, we'll go through these next week, but I want to just real quick. The cha can pop up before these, and just change a little bit. So if I say cha dasa, that's whatever. Cha wasa, however. Cha adusa, whoever. Right, and so it just changes it. This is this little thing that changes it, and then klech will change it as well. Klech dasa is nothing. Klech adusa, nobody. The exception is klech wasa, which means it's okay. That one just has a special combination, right? Nikega. Ah. On its own, it means just like just, but when you put it in front of these, it goes from what to whatever, how to however. Like uh, there was this one elder, he was getting on his four wheeler in Yakutat, and he, he speaks, he spoke Klinkit. He said, Siya Kwasatin. He turned around, he's like, Aguksa, and then he just took off. So it's like, that's the coolest exit ever. Like, See you later. And he goes, wherever, and then he just took off. It's the coolest. <laughs> so the cha, you know, and so you'll see these used as, as you start to sort of look at larger forms of Tlingit, like reading some of the books that have been published out there, you'll see these pop up sometimes, right? They didn't have anything. Or they'll say, you know, chawasa, chawasa ye they, they just, they did things any way they could. And so we'll see, and we'll look at some other examples, and we'll start to tie these to kind of shorter sentences to see how they start creating meaning. Because the thing we want to do is start learning all these little things, using them, using them, using them, using them. So then you can ask all these different questions. Where's the bathroom? Right? When are we going to eat? Right? Just things that you need to be able to communicate, right? Understanding answer. Why are you going to the store? Okay, oh, we're done. Yeah, we're done. Uh, yeah, we're done. Uh, so before you guys go, let's uh, start class on Tuesday with naming as many birds as we can. Oh, birds. birds. Alright. Good. See how many you could do. There's no pressure when we do it. It's just a warm-up exercise. Thank you for warning us. <laughs>